All right, we transition to making power move career in politics and public service. I, I want to make sure we acknowledge those who are with us. Uh, listen, real quick. I know some TV Right here, y'all. So here we are. No one man, one, no one person should have that power. So I appreciate our public serving leaders in a way where they've been representing. And I've kind of know a couple of them personally, but I'm literally going to make sure I step back in leadership as the Sister Queen Kimberly Pham steps up as our moderator. We have um, a candidate from the 14th District, of course, um, and I don't want to mess up the name, Ms. Sanchez, Ms. Boykin, as far as the district leader and the founder of OIU, um, Mr. Downs, former independent, much respect to them independents because a lot of people sleep on them, but that's a whole nother story. And our moderator, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to kick it over to Sister Kim that's in Philadelphia. Peace and blessings, y'all. I'll be back. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you all can hear me. You're good, Kim. Oh, good. All right. I got some head nods and stuff, so I appreciate that very much. I want to thank Jobs First NYC and the whole entire NYC community for allowing me to be in your space to moderate this wonderful conversation around public service and what it means to be in elected office. Like Jamil just shared, I work with Opportunity Youth United, which is a national organization um, slash movement essentially focused on young people between 16 to 24 who are disconnected from education or employment. So some of us may be familiar by our way of our own personal experience or have someone close to us who have been disconnected for some sort, but we're all in this space to reconnect, to turn up our hustle, turn up our grind, and most importantly, to get an opportunity to hear how folks have really um, made the choice and decision to turn up their grind in the public office space or in the public servant space. And we have Mr. Thomas Downs. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Yes, and um, please forgive me because I do not know any of your pronouns, so I will probably go with a general note, just want to respect to everybody, but I do go by she, her pronouns, and it, it'd be helpful if you all just let, let me know what your pronouns is as well, and um, Ms. Sanchez, is it Ms. Farina? Farina? Pronounce it for me. It's like the French name Pierre, Pierina. Arena. See, I was all wrong, and I was going to be wrong. And of course, um, a person I get to share the space with all the time is my sister, Shaquana Boinkin. Thank you. Nice to be here. Hello. Yeah. We'll uh, spend the first few minutes just, I think, giving a brief introduction about who we are and I guess the specific districts or uh, boroughs you represent. I'm from Philadelphia, y'all, so judge me because we don't have boroughs and stuff. So I, I really learned a lot about just like the government landscape and just how politics or just day-to-day -day civil duty in New York is just crazy as ever and complex, but I get to learn through you all. And I hope that the whole entire community gets to learn from you all about you know why you kind of chose to step up and, and turn it up in, in a different kind of way in your own unique way in your journey. So um, whoever wants to start us off first, please feel free to do so. I can start. I was trying to find my, my mute. <laughs> so um, I'll just give a, a, my background. Um, I, I don't mind telling my age. Um, I'm 31. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I've I've probably been the term, I've been in this position as an organizer since I was around 16. Um, and my first campaign I've ever worked on was a school campaign, um, stopping removing lead from New York City schools when I worked for an organization called ACORN. And I was the youngest field manager and it just felt good working on something that I actually go to high school and I was like, even if we didn't win, it just felt something um, that I felt passionate about. Um, later on in life, I didn't really uh, get into organizing. I just loved being in community with people. Um, I started uh, working at Brooklyn Botanic Garden and the Children's, um, Children's Garden and learning about plants and um, just learning that our fruits and vegetables 
do not come from the bodega. They actually come from the ground. Um, and taking on all of these like findings as a, a young person in a city where everything is going on, um, I decided to just keep going in programs like Brooklyn Botanic Garden, Garden Apprentice Program. And they nominated me one year to be a um, natural leader with Children in Nature Network and uh, brought me to uh, another place in, uh, in the United States that I haven't seen um, and seeing big trees and big slugs and snails and just seeing nature um, was really transform, just transformed my life. Um, and just taking all of my experiences um, and trying to figure out life coming, you know, from foster care, have my own apartment at 18 and just figuring out that everything is happening and no one is really addressing like young people, young people like me who was like going through uh, Things. So I just kept getting connected. People kept connecting me. Um, I started, uh, I wanted to work for, uh, I'm not sure if anyone heard of this uh, AmeriCorps type of program called Green City Force, but I applied to Green City Force and I had two credits more than um, they actually uh, required. So I couldn't be in Green City Force. And it bummed me out because I had all this experience. And then somebody on the train, on the bus, told me about Public Allies and put it in my phone. And I applied and I got into Public Allies and really harnessed what organizing meant and really harnessed how to give yourself to the community, but also um, factor in self-care. Thank you, Shaquana. And um, Thomas and Perina, Perina. Please forgive me if I chop it, girl, but you get to get, get on my behind, please. Um, Y'all can do the same. Definitely jump in with where you're from, the borough you represent, and specifically maybe your your, your story into just what was your, your experience that kind of gravitated you into stepping up into um, elected office or public service. Thomas, I feel like you should go first. Yeah, no, sorry. I had uh, sirens behind me because you know, New York, but uh, my name is Thomas Downs, he, him. I am the youngest person to ever run for mayor of New York City. I'm 19 currently and filed the paperwork back when I was 18. I was really driven to run just out of a love of New York City and wanting to help as many people as I possibly could. And while running my campaign, I helped my father manage his restaurant during the pandemic, which was incredibly difficult, but we made it through and today I'm very happy to say that we're still in business and that we're still kicking. Unfortunately, my campaign did come to an end with the New York City Board of Elections due to a small legal phrasing issue with the amended paperwork, even though we gathered over 6,500 signatures to get onto the ballot when the requirement was 3,750 by the New York City Board of Elections. So running for mayor of the whole city is definitely jumping into the deep end, especially at my age. But I wasn't going to let my age stop me from really trying to pursue my dreams. And I would encourage everybody, regardless of their age or status or anything like that, just to step up because you really do not know what you can or cannot do until you try it. And pretty much that's about it. That brings us to current right now. All right. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, Nice to nice to see you all. I'm always energized by by seeing you know seeing seeing a group of young people, and thank you for the for the co panelists and everybody who's been presenting today and sharing such amazing resources. Uh, so so my name is Pierina Sanchez, and I am the Democratic nominee for City Council in the 14th Council District um, in the Bronx, where I was born and raised. Uh, which is it just feels crazy to say. I think um, I think this is officially the first time that I've said that after the results were certified. So I just want to shout out Thomas. I want to shout out, um, I want to shout out Shaquana. I want to shout out everybody who's ever run for office because it is so difficult. And so let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, so, but first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I, I'm Birina Sanchez. I was born and raised in the 14th council district. 
And for those of you who might not be familiar, that's, you know, the Northwest Bronx, Kingsbridge, Fordham, University Heights, uh, a very, a community that is full of strivers, right? That's, that's how I always say, if y'all live here, and, and throw your X's up, by the way, if you're from the Bronx, just some spirit fingers. I see Kingsbridge in the chat. Yes, 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 yes. If you're from here, you know, you, you know what it's like here, right? It is, we're full of people who, with so many hopes and dreams. A lot of immigrants, about 45% of our people here, our neighbors are coming from a different country. A lot of people with, with just dreams and hopes about a better future, right? Even though, even though we face some of the most difficult circumstances in the city of New York, right? We have some of the lowest incomes. We have people, especially during this pandemic, we were hard hit. We we're struggling with food insecurity and all of that. You know, but for me, my passion for community service, my passion for the neighborhood starts actually at a very young age. At, at a younger age than even I realized when I started in public service, because one of my first memories as a kid uh, is waking up in the middle of the night. Uh, my mom didn't speak English and she was just yelling at my siblings and I, Pierina, Willy, Juan Carlos, levantense, levantense, wake up, wake up. There was a fire. And that fire, we had to rush out, no shoes, half a shirt on, you name it, we just had to get out. And I remember looking up at our building and wondering what had happened. And then later over, over the life, over life, right? Over just talking to my parents and, and speaking to my aunts who lived upstairs, you know, coming to understand that what had happened that night was actually an abuse of power, was actually a landlord who had retaliated against tenants who dared to march into legal aid society. I don't know if you guys have ever had the experience of you know, having, you know, facing an eviction or something like that. You go to the legal aid society to help you out. Well, back then they also did. And so in my building, there were tenants that went to the legal aid society, low-income people went to, to get legal help and to push back against this landlord that wasn't providing heat, hot water, repairs, you name it. And so this landlord, the story goes and, and have heard from neighbors and from family members since then, decided to retaliate by setting what they thought was gonna be a small fire in an empty apartment, but that ended up flooding the whole building as the firefighters came and tried to put this fire out. And so for me, you know, that's, that's our foundation, right? That's so many of us who struggle in life, who come from humble roots, that's, that's what we start with. We start with coming into a world full of abuse, full of if the color of your, of your skin is the wrong one, if you don't speak the language, if, you know, if your parents happen to, to work in a profession or in a job that is just not gonna pay the bills, then you're gonna be disrespected and you're gonna be taken advantage of. And so for me, that's, that's the core, that's the foundation of everything that I have ever done in my life. And so I went on to, to public school, PS46, MS45. I got a scholarship to go to Catholic school for, for high school. And I got a lot of you know, programs like this. And that's why I'm so thankful for everybody who's on this call you know, sharing advice for you all. Because I went to a program when I was in high school called Upward Bound that when you know, some of my friends were getting into, into trouble and all of that helped me to stay on the right path, right? Helped me and advised me on what to do to, to get you know, to get to whatever, I didn't know where I wanted to do, right? For me, it was trial and error, but, but to make sure that I became the best version of myself, right? And so I, I went to this program called Upward Bound, and I had a lot of mentorship and a strong family support system, got a full scholarship to go to Harvard, then went to Princeton. I worked in the White House with President Obama. I, I also have been so much in service of this community, because even though I just mentioned I, I lived in Washington, D.C. while I was in the White House, for the rest of my life, I've always been here in the hood, in District 14, in the Bronx. You can't get me out of here. And so for me, you know, the, the, the reach for service comes from the injustices that, that I saw, right? And, and what I always say to, to kids, you know, who, who might be in high school or who might, who might have left high school or, or whatever the case may be, you've done advocacy. Right, because even if you were like four or five years old and you was like, I want to go to sleep a little bit later, that's advocacy right there, right? Making making what you want to see in the world <laughs> or in your home, making that known is advocacy. And so we all have a little bit of that in us. You know, for me, it was understanding that you know I I was going into into positions and into places where I could you know have a little bit of a stronger voice. That that to me you know was also a du duty and responsibility. And so last thing I'll say, and I'm sorry, I probably went a little bit long, but I just want to share with all of you, you know. To me, it was never clear, you know, what I was gonna do. Like, I wasn't one of these kids that, like, at five years old, was like, I'm gonna be the president now. Nah. Like, I actually wanted to be a maid, and that's a whole other story I'll tell you about it. 
Um, but for me, it was trial and error. For me, it was like figuring out, you know, who am I? What am I good at? You know, what, what do I need to do? And so I want to impart on you, right? Like figuring it out is tough, right? And, and you start something and you might do not do so well. You might do, might do very well, but just keep at it, right? And, and what I, you know, last thing I'll say is what I firmly believe is that the world needs you to be the best version of yourself not anybody else but you, right? And so whoever you are and whatever you are the best at, like that's what, what, what your job is to figure out and to try to do everything you can. That could be, you know, working, working in retail, that could be working in corporate America, that could be, you know, driving, whatever the case may be, that could be public service. Just go after who you are and what you're, and what you're into and, and the world will kind of, you know, help you along that path once you start. I am in the room with some power players, some change makers, all that good stuff, as y'all can hear. I myself am a public servant for my city. I serve with the mayor on selecting our school board members. So I want folks to know, even if you're not directly in city council or whatever, there is ways to plug in and, and be a part of service and actually activating change. Um, I want to focus this next question on for you all. I think uh, you were all diving into it. My gosh, there's so many questions to ask, but not a lot of time. I think what people need to hear in this space, I think key is like how you all kind of came to finding your voice. And I know it might be a series of events, but I want to give everybody at least one to two minutes to really express about like, I guess, uh, uh, instance or like those those challenges or those experiences that helped you build your power, essentially your voice, you know, having that that advocacy or that sense of agency, knowing that my voice is powerful, it's valuable, and I'm going to add it to this space, even if they don't want me here, right? Or even if I'm not welcome. So I would love to hear um from you all about, yeah, like that that moment, that pivot for you all, even rather if it's through the pandemic, pre-pandemic, whatever, however you want to focus your answer. Yeah, thanks, Kim. I'll start. Um, I actually uh, was, uh, after Public Allies, my Public Allies uh, 10 months, 10 month term, I was working at a nonprofit um, around a business improvement district um, and working with communities around healthy initiatives. So starting CSAs, um, I started a, a City Harvest uh, mobile market serving um, three NYCHA developments, one where I live in, I live in Walt Whitman. So I serve Walt Whitman residents, I've served Ingersoll and Farragut and just seeing the power of people and always being able to push back. Um, my supervisors would say, yeah, let's bring in um, all these sponsors to come and help. And I would be like, no. What we can do is we can make sure that our volunteers who live here in public housing have, have the tools that they need to show up and be present for the other residents. A lot of our residents was arguing with each other. So me being able to say, hey, we all need to come from one space and that's we're giving out food. If you are having a bad time, you are, it's okay to step back. It's okay to not have answers. Being able to um, filter and um, curate our own um, members who live in a society and making sure that they show up and not that there's people who, yes, you may have gave us this funding, but you're okay, right? Um, so being able to, no matter what position I was in, I literally was always advocating for the community. Um, so once I became once I started working at the mayor's office, I was working in the mayor's office action. Um, I was working in the criminal justice department around the mayor's office action plan for neighborhood safety and public housing. And I remember doing all these surveys um, and getting people to join um, my, my group. And it was like the most diverse group out of all the 10, um, actually 15 sites. Um, so, and in my area, uh, Fort Greene, uh, we have a lot of people who speak Bengali. Um, we have uh, uh, we have different uh, uh, Asian Americans. We have um, Black people. We have Spanish people. And in order to serve, I I just wanted to make sure that we have representation, and that meant access and tapping into the mayor's office, asking them for interpreters. So all the things that they were saying that they had, I was asking for it. 
And at every time I asked, it was a problem. So I just, I noticed that it was like this, this shade, like we can put out there about access to this, we could put out, but when it's time to actually do it, you wasn't there. So I, I said, okay, they need data. So I have a hundred and something surveys that's saying, yes, I feel safe in my public housing, but this brochure that you have with all of these access to uh, DIFTA, the Services Department of Asian, um, HRA, Human Resources, um, One Shot Deals, I don't, I don't see these people. So I took these surveys and I went to the mayor's office and I showed them and they said, this is great, but actually we're working on safety. And at that moment, I said, in order to get to uh, the communities that I, the community that I feel like we all need, um, maybe I needed to run for office. So I was, I was thinking about it, but I was like, that's crazy. I don't have no money, whatever. And then one day, the same group of people that I was convening um, came in an hour early and had a, a, a whole bunch of food for me, a poem, and said, Shaquana, we want you to serve us past this group. And then it started clicking, like, oh, wow, like, maybe I could. And then um, I'm also Opportunity Youth United um, community leader, and we started um, really just going to conferences and we had this one conference um, with new politics around like finding your voice, asking the right, right question, how to run for office. And it just like literally all started to come together. And uh, a group of people uh, came up to me from a public, um, a, group, a group of people who see me in the area. They said they see me giving out food, talking to people for over seven years. And they had brought me um, a card where I worked at like seven, eight years ago. And it was like, have you ever heard of district leader? And I was like, what the heck is that? Um, so district leader is literally everything that I already do and love. It's um, adding on a couple, a few extra things, but being able to uh, be a part of the Democratic Party activity, getting people excited to vote, getting people, um, getting poll workers hired, but poll workers do, who can do the job, who can understand how to get people excited to just fill out that ballot. Um, getting um, getting our electeds um, known in our communities. A lot of times we don't have people showing out. So just getting people excited. And that's what made me run for office. Just all of the things that we all go through. And I just was like, let me elevate myself and see if I could do it. And I did run and I won. So I do represent Assembly District um, 57. That's uh, Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, parts of Western parts of Crown Heights, Best Eye, and um, Prospect Heights. So over 125,000 registered voters. Um, it was amazing. Only 6,000 people have historically voted in primaries in that district. And when I ran, over 29,000 people voted. So. It's amazing. <laughs> Just a, a refresher of that question. I think however you all translated, finding your voice in office, finding your voice in, during your moments of experience and activating. Thank you so much, Shaquana, for sharing. Um, Please go ahead and feel free to share, you know, your moment of activation. And just a heads up on the next question. We'll, we don't have that much time, but we'll focus it in on, I think, a tip or things that folks need to hear who, who are very much interested or even um, sometimes we're a little bit disconnected because we feel like it just isn't relevant in our life. So I think even just making those types of connections for folks um, is very powerful. Well, for me, it all started when I was much younger and I had that vision. It's like, oh, well, I want to be president of the United States one day. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I got plenty of time to try that. But right now, New York City's struggling. So back when I was about 13, I thought, I'm going to run for mayor of New York City. Now, if people remember 2013, it was about the same time Bill de Blasio got elected. And that changed a lot for me. And that made me really realize we need New Yorkers to start stepping up again. So I went down years and years and years, and I kept reading into it. I'm like, well, this would be difficult, but maybe I'll try it. Maybe I won't. And then things started to happen where I was out in the streets and I was volunteering at a part of the solutions up at a Webster Avenue by Fordham area. And I really saw 
the problem of New York City, where it's very easy for politicians to neglect so many people just because they're not the demographic they're targeting for fundraising. And that's really my turning point where I said, I'm going to run for office. So that June, I filed with the IRS, filed the company for a nonprofit status as a political organization, filed with the campaign finance board, and then later kept going on and on and on, started joining forums, started actually speaking, which I was terrified of. I really had a deep fear of public speaking and still kind of do, but really wanting to help New Yorkers made it a lot easier. And it's only fearful until the actual buildup. And once you're in it, it seems to be okay. But a lot of this I did on my own, campaign finance board, board of elections, and I really just worked hard at it, wanting to help New Yorkers, wanting to spread a message that young people can do whatever they set their minds to, and really just making it so people felt like they were heard, no matter where they were in the city, regardless of their race, gender identity, ethnicity, status, uh, income even, because there are so many different New Yorkers, eight and a half million of us, that just are not thought of in so many ways. And it really hurt me to see that. And that's really why I kind of ran this campaign and really wanted to make as big of a difference as I could. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually, I think I'm a little bit more similar with, with Shaquana in the way that, you know, she she's done so much work, right? She did so, so much work. She was out there. She was serving way before she, she thought about running. Um, and for me, it was, it was like that, like, I'm a huge nerd, y'all. Um, the Harvard thing, you know, the, the part of being a nerd, right? Like, I just really like data. I like, you know, analysis. I like, you know, to think about how, what's the big picture, right? I like looking, you know, there's some people who are really on the ground and they, like, they, they are uh, hand-to-hand combat in the way that they like to approach work and like to like work with people. I like that too, but I like to also zoom up and soar like and see the bird's eye view of what's the big picture of everything that's happening, right? And so for me, you know, when I when I finished college, I I came and I worked for the city council member on the ground, right? But then zoomed up and started to work as an urban planner. Spirit fingers, anybody ever played Sims? You're like, you know, where the I see some spare fingers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where do you put the housing? Where do you put the transportation? And where you know where do we, we build the rail line? That's that's the work that I was doing for for many years before I started to think about running for office. But just really looking at you know New York City as a whole, and actually not just New York City. I was I was a, a regional planner, so I was working in Connecticut, like Norwalk, and all the different. Pl- I'm like forgetting now. Like New Haven, we had projects. Long Island, Trenton, New Jersey, like. We we were all in the in the three states, you know, really thinking about what is what what is this region, right? Like that bird that's soaring and that's like looking at everything. And, you know, again, you know, similar to being like four years old and having this experience with, with my aunts, you know, being 24 years old and being a being an urban planner, being a regional planner and looking at how that inequality, like you could put it on a map. And you can see, you know, where where are the schools in the region? Where are the underfunded schools? Where are the schools that are doing very well? How does that correlate with X, Y, and Z? You know, where where are we growing? Where do we need to? And really, you know, from from that nerdy kind of like you know bird's eye perspective, from the urban planning view and the and the Sims right, like the Sims view, you know, what does New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut need to get ahead, right? And doing this work and and just understanding like more and more, I love it. You know, I, I love being in all these different spaces, but I also, I just want to go back and, and having learned what I did, I want to do the work in my community, right? Like I'm on the community board already. I'm, I'm very active on the ground and, you know, I do mentorship and stuff like that here in the neighborhood. But what if like, instead of 20% of my time being dedicated to the community, 1000% of my time was dedicated to the community, right? And so that's that's what really kind of, you know, shifted me over to just want to dedicate everything that I have and everything that I don't have to, right? Like I'm counting on y'all, I'm counting on everybody here in the neighborhood to get involved so that we can do this together. But like, you know, building up that voice so that we're, we can fight, we can fight for the neighborhood. And, and one thing, well, I guess it's the next question, but um, I just mentioned that, 
you know, you can you can literally do anything, right? Like I think you know, Mr. Downs is a is a perfect example that you can you can you can do it, right? Like it, it takes discipline, it takes organization, like figure out how things work and 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 then like go after it. Like you can do that, right? And that's that was my experience in in running for office. I didn't run for mayor, but even running for the city council, it's it's like complicated to do all these things that he mentioned, like file with the IRS and like do all these things, but you can do it, right? Like you make a to-do list and then you one by one by one you you do those things and next thing you know you've run a campaign right and so you know just energizing y'all to to get after it like whatever that is for you that you want to do thank you so much it was all moving if i, I want folks to probably you know make sure y'all uh dropping y'all contacts in the chat box so folks know how to tap in with you all and we don't kind of do that super late but I want folks to realize like how much hope is essential and, and really be, and, and believing in yourself is so important in this. Really, like it doesn't matter if you're running for office or you're just waking up to, to get up. Like believe in yourself is so powerful to, to, you know, for our manifestation, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. And you hear it all in these powerful officials right here, young, ready, and activated, just how much hope was needed how much sometimes everybody doesn't want to be born or asked to grow to grow up in the struggle, but how much the struggle motivates you and builds drive so that you know, how, like there's room for improvement in our communities. And I, and I respect y'all wholeheartedly for seeing the room for improvement and not like backing down and, and, and being complacent with the culture, you know, of nothing's really changing. And just, um, Tom is just, being confident, you know, and, and being consistent is so key and knowing that you got to get your feet wet and there's levels to this, right? Like, let me get my feet wet first and then I'm going to be ready to take over the White House to, you know, be ready for the nation. And I love how you turned it up on just like your local community, which is so important because at the end of the day, no matter where we go at in life, home is where the heart is. And if you don't make, you know, like a memory home, like you don't build a relationship with your home community. Like it's not about like um, reputation. It's just about you. You need a sense of community to push you on, you know, and and more people to believe in you to know that you could get to that level that millions of people will trust your leadership. So I, I truly want to, you know, just spend the last few minutes with you all just providing a tip of some sort you know, that tips or anything that's critical. I think all the jewels you all dropped were essentially tips. Rather, if it's like, just tap in, do something. My, my, my thing is, I think what you all might say is networking and really identifying some type of mentor, but having that courage, like drop your fears of getting to connect with somebody you know, who might be doing something that you're doing. So my thing is just breaking down that mental fear or that mental barrier we have. And I'll pass it on to you all to share your tips about activating it in public service and in office. I was um, just going to say my, my tips um, is uh, kind of what most of us all said is just really trusting your gut. And it sounds so easy for us to roll it off our tongue. I know I've been there. I've been in your place where you're like, I want to do this, but I don't really know how. Trust me, sometimes we all don't know. But the beauty of working together, the beauty of tapping into somebody, you, 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 like you will not know how far you will go. So please trust yourself, whatever you want to do, tap into others that you feel that can get you there. Even if they can't help you, I'm sure somebody will help you um, get to that person that can help you or that group. I would just really say to close off, whether you're an introvert, extrovert, a writer, a speaker, you don't have to be someone who wants to represent your community. You don't have to be someone that wants to go out. You can stay at home all you want. The one thing that I would say, and it's not really a tip, it's more of a necessity for the future. Please go out and vote. Find a candidate, read up on your elections, read up on what's going on in your neighborhood. I don't care who you vote for, just please get informed about your election, find someone who represents who you best are or someone you can really get behind and make your voice heard at the ballot 
every time an election comes around because without voting, we're not going to be able to go any further. And without electing people to offices who actually care about where they're representing and who actually want to make a difference for the better and not just create a career for themselves or fill their own pockets with backroom deals, voting is the only way to do that. And we really need to get out there, especially as young people in this country, and vote because that is our right living in this great country and living in a country that provides us this opportunity when so many other people around the world do not have the same. Yes, I just wanna echo, echo everything that Shaquana said, everything that Thomas said and everything that Kimberly said. And, you know, just, just add this piece, right? Um, you know, I think, I think about, you know, public service, you're, you're in it to, to try to make the world a better place, to try to make your community, you know, more livable, to, to try to like, you know, make sure that the dignity inherent in everyone, right? Like every single person who walks down the street, I don't care what they're going through, has dignity. You're trying to uplift that, right? And the thing is that, and, and Asia, thank you for writing in the chat, is there another way to, to work on this? The thing is, is that, you know, you, you should, the way I think about it, maybe you can, think about it like a highway, right? You ever been on a highway stuck in traffic? Right, like you, you ever, you ever been on a highway where they, they close all the lanes and there's only one open, and then it just really slows down, and you're like, dang, I really wanted to get to this party, but now I'm gonna be like three hours late because everybody's in the same lane. Think about the world that way. We don't need everyone to do the same thing. We need you to do what you're good at. We need you to be the best version again of yourself, right? And so, if you if you take that analogy and you think about the highway, if everybody gets behind each other. We ain't getting nowhere, right? But if everybody takes a different lane, not only does the traffic flow, but you're signaling to each other, right? From government to you know the community organizers on the ground to the, the business owners and the entrepreneurs, right? I know you guys talked about entrepreneurship today to corporate America, to everything, right? It should be a dialogue because the, at the end of the day, like nothing happens in one space. It happens when all the spaces talk to each other, right? So in this community, if we're, we're having we're having a struggle with with violence right now in my district, right, in, in our community. And so we get the organizers on the ground that are talking to the folks in the community because they're from here. And then they go and they put together a protest and that gets the, the attention of those who are in elected office. And then the people in elected office are like, dang, we have to we have to do something about this. We have to fund programs, but we need more money. It can't just be government money. So then they go to corporate America, right? And that's what I'm talking about with, with the lanes and the shifting. Everybody's talking to each other because you everybody wants a better world in their own way, I hope. <laughs> I, I choose to believe because I'm an optimist, right? Everybody wants a better world, but you got to use all of the different lanes to get there. So figure you out. Like I said, this is about you finding your way and we're here to help. Like I'm here, I put, I even put my like home address on there. Like come visit, y'all you, you want to talk, let's talk, right? Because there's, there's all of these folks out here in the world that want you to be the best version of yourself. And that's what the world needs you to, needs you to do. So thank you so much for, for organizing this. And it's really nice to meet all of y'all. Thank you to this wonderful panel. Thank you to these powerful people and all the powerful people who are here in this space. Y'all been rocking out for three plus hours here. So much kudos to all of us. And I'm going to hand it back to my big brother, Jamil, um, who's been MCN, and he's going to go into the My City, My Community um, pitch results. So we're looking forward to all that. Ah, peace and blessings. That was powerful, powerful, powerful. And even when Ms. Sanchez, um, it's crazy that you, you talked about the highway. I remember the great Melody Barnes, who actually used to work in Obama's era now, who became my boss and is in NY, um, talking about that interstate and that uh, connection. And even the district leader, Kwana, like much respect, she mentioned um, new politics and much respect to our director, um, LaShawn, who was actually joined. He actually put um the new power project, and even Mr. Downs. Peace and blessings, young king. The fact that you were focused so earlier, I know I kind of veered off around at 13 age, but much respect, much respect. There's a certain kind of focus and tone of vision you can't deny. Um, so, dun, dun, dun. the moment we've been kind of waiting for, and I'm actually gonna, um, uh, where my man Justin at? I need you, and I'm gonna pass this a little bit. Where you at? You still here, you still rocking? Yes, sir. I'm here with you. What's going ah. on? Oh, I can't complain. Uh, I'm going to need your energy a little bit. I know the results aren't ready, so I'm going to kind of keep it up to the job first um, to kind of uh, 
to talk about the audience favorite, and then me and you gonna close out together. That's good, good brother. Okay, I'm with it. Just incredible. Any thoughts about the panel in the day while they kind of get that together? You already know, King. Absolutely. Um, she's uh, the the pan the the finalists. Man, um, so much focus, so much structure, um, so much collaboration, and just thinking outside of the box and thinking about how to serve their community and how to make impact. I love it. The judges, they were deep into it, man. Uh, as far as feedback and about things that they could do to enhance the vision, that's priceless, priceless gems that they were giving them. Um, the uh, from, from Bill Chong's speech, from Marjorie's message, you're talking, um, obviously, your energy has been just nonstop. Uh, Miss Hot Sauce, I loved her presentation. Uh, I, I just think that there's so many. And then this panel that we just had right now about um, about making power moves, I, I, I thought everyone here was so positive, so focused, so professional um, from every single moderator, from Kim. Like, everyone is on their A1 game, and I think everyone wants to to grow, serve, help others out, and uh, while going through their career path. So I love it. Yes, so we are we are anticipating. Um, continue to dream big, think outside the box, and that's, think outside the box. And I want to mention the fact that I respect our elected officials, and there was something um, that Mr. Down, Towns Down said as far as like just getting out there to vote. Like when it's all said and done, if that's not just seeing you behind the scenes, your right is to vote. And the fact that you know there will be people who will continue to advocate for you. Just like the sister queen in Philadelphia, like I respect Kim in a way where that she may not be running for office, but she's in the mayor ear about what's going on in the community. I've been in, I've been with her so in solidarity, but even just kind of following her on social media. So when it's all said and done, your voice, your advocacy, going back to what even um Miss Sanchez was saying, like you, you know, that was thorough as far as the even when we're young, we're advocating. So I appreciate that, that consciousness and bringing it as well. So, ah! My God, look, we've been rocking out all day. I don't feel like there's a deeper connection, so it's love. All right, so they ready. I see the OK Poverty, Miss Wilson, it is on you. Ah! Ready? We got it? I think so. I, th I just hit him. Ready for the here audience phase. Let's go. Well, here we go. Drum roll. Uh, most innovative speech, audience. Ah. Yeah. Kara Cutler, Stephen Ramos, Cassandra as well, this Destiny Cannon. Can we give them some love, y'all? We're gonna clap or we'll even give them, let's give them them virtual vibes. Audience favorite. I mean, y'all connected with the people. Hmm. That's what's up. You got the second one, Just Incredible. You on it? Best overall presentation is gonna go to Cynthia and Crystal. <laughs> hey. Ladies, we're on it. Smooth. I love it. Congratulations, ladies. All right. So, Josh, first, we do thank y'all. As far as um, the social media, they're going to announce us the results. My city, my community. First of all, I want to make sure I acknowledge the fact that this was a dope idea. And one of the things, whether it be through OYU or even working with Aspen and in D.C., there's a level of data slash intel that the lab has but those of our on the ground those of us on the ground in the field kind of doing a direct service just collaborating together and talking about those highways and making these connections and moving forward like we're deeply rooted and we're grounded so i'm literally going to be quiet just incredible any thoughts closing us out we're going to make this thing work I love, I love the, uh, I love the community. I love the push. I love the help. I forgot a, about even the, the breakout groups. Those were amazing. Um, make sure that you follow Jobs First NYC on Instagram, Twitter. Um, you go to the website, uh, jobsfirstnyc.org. Um, make sure that you follow them on, on all social media platforms and make sure that in your booklet, in your young adults booklet, that you're following all of those guest speakers, all the panelists, everyone that showed up, follow them, make sure that you connect, um, whether you can support or just learn something from them. D don't let it stop here. Make sure that this is a continuous uh, uh, community and online dialogue and continue to just uh, go towards your goals.